The popliteal sciatic nerve block is a good block to do for the sciatic nerve because this is where the sciatic nerve is found most shallow. This block can be performed for posterior knee pain after knee surgery as well as calf, foot, and ankle surgery. This is the main nerve that supplies the lower leg. I find a lateral position gives you good control of the patient's airwaves if you sedate them as well as good ergodynamics to do the block. Here we have our patient positioned laterally with the pillow between the legs for comfort. To do the popliteal sciatic nerve block, we use a linear probe. The linear probe allows us to see structures well in the shallow plane, but gives us a wide field of view to see our needle approaching the nerve. To perform the popliteal sciatic nerve block, we put the probe directly in the back of the knee. Placement of the probe in the back of the knee reveals a structure of the nerve, the vein, the artery. I call this structure the snowman in the back of the knee. You have three circles on top of each other, the uppermost circle represented by the tibial component of the sciatic nerve, the, in the middle structure represented by the vein, and the deep structure represented by the popliteal artery. If we put colored Doppler on the screen, we are able to see the pulsating artery in this area. Sometimes it's difficult to see the popliteal vein because this is a low flow state, such as we see here. To visualize the popliteal vein better, we can squeeze the back of the calf, increasing venous flow through the popliteal vein, such as this. There we can see increased venous flow through the popliteal vein, represented better by color Doppler. Now, as I mentioned, this is only the tibial component of the sciatic nerve. We want to get the nerve where it comes together and has both components, the peroneal and the tibial component. As we scan up the leg, here we now see the peroneal component laterally, the tibial component medially, the popliteal vein and popliteal artery. On the medial side, we see the semitendinosus and semimembranosus muscles. On the lateral side, we see the biceps femoris, long and short heads. As we keep going up the leg, the tibial and peroneal components join into one nerve. Sometimes we block the nerve at this level where the two components are joining. This allows us to get both components with a single injection at the nerve. My needle approach for these blocks are going to be from lateral to medial. What I typically do is measure the depth of the sciatic nerve in this setting. Here the sciatic nerve is approximately one and a half to two centimeters deep to the probe. So if I measure one and a half to two centimeters deep, my needle is going to come in completely perpendicular and have a very bright view of the needle and needle shaft as it advances to the nerve. Now, I typically like to inject deep to the nerve as well as superficial to the nerve in order to get complete surrounding of the popliteal sciatic nerve for the most rapid onset for this block. Typical volumes used are 20 to 30 milliliters of local anesthetic. This block takes some time to onset and studies have shown even with complete surrounding of the nerve, it takes up to 30 minutes for the nerve block to onset in most patients. Here we see the popliteal sciatic nerve surrounded by the biceps femoris laterally and the semitendinosus semimembranosus medially. Our needle is advanced directly above the nerve and the local anesthetic is injected pushing the nerve deeper. We then withdraw the needle and re-advance the needle again close to the nerve so we can get local anesthetic spreading to the medial side of the nerve, which is more of the tibial component. Now you can visualize both the peroneal and tibial component with a local anesthetic completely surrounding the nerves. 